Hello everyone. Welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. Today we are going to discuss about the digestive system of a human and how the large intestine present in your digestive system helps in digestion. So let us see the topics that we are going to cover in this session. We are going to study about the large intestine and the parts of large intestine in detail. You see some ascending colon, transverse colon, sigmoid colon and anal canal. Followed by which we will be studying about the pancreas, the liver, the gall bladder and bile, followed by the absorption of nutrients and we will also study about the common diseases and disorders which one face due to improper digestion functions. So let us see about the large intestine. Your large intestine is named so because its diameter is larger than your small intestine and it has five parts which are important and those parts are your sesum, your ascending colon, your transverse colon, your descending colon and your sigmoid colon. So these are the different parts of your large intestine which are important. And next we have the rectum followed by which you have the anal canal which leads to your anus. So this is how a large intestine has its parts and this is the manner in which your compounds travel in your large intestine. Next we are going to see the parts in detail. Your large intestine extends from the ileum that is the last portion of your small intestine to the anus. So your ileum opens into the sesum which is the beginning of your large intestine. And your sesum has the veriform appendix. Then we have the ascending colon. It is a portion of your large intestine that goes up the right side of your abdominal cavity. And then we have the transverse colon which crosses the abdominal co cavity from right to left. And then there is the descending colon which leads to your anus. So your descending colon is followed by the sigmoid colon and your sigmoid colon is S shaped portion in your pelvic cavity. And then we have the anal canal which is a few centimeters of the rectum and the opening to outside of the body is known as your anus. So this is how your large intestine is located in your digestive system. Here you can see that your ileum gets into your cecum and here you have the appendix your ascending colon, your transverse colon, your descending colon followed by the sigmoid rectum and anal canal. Next we have the structure of the large intestine wall. Your large intestine has 
little or no digestive function. It absorbs mainly the water and the electrolytes that is left behind in the compounds after absorption in your small intestine. A large intestine secretes the mucus to lubricate the compound as it passes through your large intestine. And it is a house of intestinal flora. It forms the feces and it carries out the defecation. So if you see, your large intestine has the serosa, above which is your muscular layer and your submucosa layer secretes the mucus and then we have the mucosa followed by the lumen. Let us see about the moments in the large intestine. The moments of your large intestine are similar to those of your small intestine. It is slower and less frequent than that of your small intestine. So your foot moves very slowly and less frequently in your small intestine than your small intestine in your large intestine. The movements include mixing movement and peristalsis. So the mass movements usually follow the means. Your defecation reflex relaxes the internal sphincter and your external anal sphincter. So during the defecation process, it relaxes the internal sphincter and then the external anal sphincter is relaxed. Next we are going to study about the feces, which is the compound that is ejected outside after the digestion. Feces is composed of materials which is not digested or absorbed and it includes the following compounds. Water, electrolytes, mucus, bacteria, bile pigments altered by bacteria provide the color. So these are the major compounds with which your feces is composed of and these are the materials which is not digested or absorbed. If you see your feces has a pungent odor and the odor is produced by bacterial compounds which includes the following compounds phenol, hydrogen sulfide, indole, skato and ammonia. So these are the compounds which produces a pungent odor in the feces. Next we are going to study about the pancreas. Your pancreas has a dual function as it acts as an endocrine gland as well as an exocrine gland. The exocrine function is to secrete the digestive juice called as your pancreatic juice. And if you see the location of your pancreas is behind your stomach. The acinar cells 
in your pancreas produce the pancreatic juice which is an enzyme that is released and stimulated by which your parasympathetic nervous system functions and the hormones secretin and cholecystokinin is generated from the small intestine so these are the things which stimulates your pancreas which is having the acna cells to produce the pancreatic juice let us see the structure of the pancreas your pancreas is located behind the stomach and your pancreas has the pancreatic duct and then we have the tail of the pancreas the entrance of the pancreas from duodenum has the major duodenal papilla after which you have your sphincter muscles as you can see this is the head of your pancreas so this region of the starting part of your pancreas towards which your duodenum is attached is enlarged over here so you can see that it has a bile duct which is connected to your gall bladder so this is your bile duct and then it has a pancreatic duct which leads to your pancreas The sphincter muscles which control these two ducts are the hepatopancreatic sphincter and the opening over here is known as hepatopancreatic ampulla Next we are going to see about the pancreatic juice Your pancreatic juice contains enzymes that digest carbohydrates, fats, proteins and the nucleic acids. It also digests using the following enzymes which includes pancreatic amylase which splits your glycogen into disaccharides. And your pancreatic juice has the enzyme pancreatic lipase which breaks down the triglycerides. And it also produces trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen and carboxypeptidase. Your pancreatic juice helps in digestion of proteins the enzyme nuclease is produced in your pancreatic juice digest the nucleic acid the bicarbonate ions in your juice makes the pancreatic juice an alkaline so these are the enzymes which are present in your pancreatic juice to digest your carbohydrates fats proteins and nucleic acids next we are going to see 
the regulation of your pancreatic secretion. So as a first, your acidic chyme enters into your duodenum from your stomach and after which your bicarbonate ions will neutralize your acidic chyme. The bicarbonate ions is secreted by the pancreas. And next, your intestinal mucosa releases secretin into bloodstream. So these steps are known as stimulation of effector organ. And after which your chyme is neutralized by the bicarbonate ions that is generated by your pancreatic juice. The hormonal signals are released into your bloodstream and the secretin stimulates the pancreas to secrete the bicarbonate ions. So this is how your chyme is being processed inside your duodenum as it enters into your small intestine. So this is the regulation of your pancreatic secretion. Next we are going to study about the liver and it is an important note that your liver is the largest internal organ one can have. It is located in the upper right abdominal quadrant just beneath the diaphragm and your liver has the following parts. It has a right lobe and a left lobe. You have a ligament in between which separates your right and your left lobe which is the coronary ligament, the flaciform ligament over here and the round ligament. And you can find your inferior vena cava and your gallbladder. So this is the anterior view of your liver. The posterior view of your liver will be like this. You can see the gallbladder. So this will be your right lobe and this will be your left lobe. And it has the inferior vena cava over here your hepatic duct, hepatic artery and hepatic portal vein can be found over here. Next we are going to study about the functions of a liver. The liver carries on many important metabolic activities which includes prediction of glycogen from glucose and it breaks down the glycogen that is produced into glucose. It converts non-carbohydrates to glucose and it oxidizes the fatty acids. It helps in synthesis of lipoproteins phospholipids and cholesterol. Your liver converts the carbohydrates and proteins into fats which is necessary for the body to maintain the heat and it also helps in deanimating the amino acids which is present inside a human. 
so the liver carries on these important metabolic activities if you see your liver forms a compound of urea and it synthesizes the plasma proteins your liver does the function of converting some amino acids into another amino acids it stores glycogen iron and vitamins a d and b12 that is b12 and it does the phagocytosis of worn out rbcs and foreign substances it removes toxins such as alcohol and certain drugs that is present in the blood so these are the important functions of the liver so if you see over here you can see the sectional view of the liver you can see over here the branch of hepatic portal vein inside which you can find the bile canal culi followed by the bile ductile here you can see that you have a bile duct and the branches of hepatic artery so this is a sectional view of this view the bile duct hepatic portal vein hepatic artery everything is visible over here and this will be your central vein these portions are known as your hepatic sinusoids so this is a further zoomed version of the lateral view of the livers You can clearly see your bile duct over here and the bile canal culi. So the green vein that you can see over here is your bile ductile. And the white colored region is your Kupffer cell. and these are your hepatic cells this will be your central vein to which the hepatic sinusoids are rushing the blood flow and these two are the arteries and the veins which supplies the blood into your liver for the process of purification of the blood next we are going to study about the gall bladder and the bile the gall bladder is a small sac which can be found under side of the liver and it is 10 cm long on an average in a day 500 to 1000 ml of bile is secreted by your gall bladder your gall bladder will store 
and concentrate the bile your bile backs up into your gall bladder from a filled bile duct between the meals and your bile is concentrated by the factor of 20 if you see your bile is nothing but a yellow green fluid which contains minerals bile acids cholesterol bile pigments and phospholipids the bilirubin pigment from your hemoglobin breakdown is used in converting your intestinal bacteria to urobilinogen and after the conversion it is brown in color your bile acids emulsify fats and aid in the digestion of fats enterohepatic circulation is nothing but recycling of the bile acids from your ileum so this is a term for defining the recycling of bile acids which is supplied from the ileum Next we are going to study about the composition of bile. We have studied that bile is a yellowish green liquid which is produced by the hepatic cells which is present in your liver. And it continuously secretes bile. Your bile is a compound which is made up of water your bile salts which emulsify fats and they help in absorbing fatty acid cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins and your bile has bile pigments cholesterol and electrolytes so these are the compounds which combine to produce the bile So these are the compounds which the bile is composed of. Next we are going to study about the regulation of bile release. As you can see, this is your cystic duct. And then we have the gall bladder over here. And this is your common hepatic duct from the liver. So your chyme from the stomach enters into your duodenum over here. So your chyme with fat enters over here. And the cells from the internal mucosa will secrete the hormone cholecystokinin or cck into your blood stream at this point of time your cck will stimulate a muscular layer of gall bladder wall to contract once your cck stimulates the wall to contract the bile duct that is present over here will release the bile juice that is the bile passes down the cystic duct and the bile duct to your duodenum 
so your bile juice is released down the cystic duct into the duodenum once the bile juice passes into your duodenum the hepatopancreatic sphincter relaxes and your bile enters into your duodenum through your bile duct and your pancreatic duct will produce a pancreatic juice so this is how the process takes place in the digestion of chyme in the initial stages in your small intestine with the help of liver and the pancreas next we are going to study about the functions of bile salts your bile salts will aid in digestive enzymes they reduce the surface tension and they break fat globules into droplets like soap or detergent so the reduction of the surface tension and they break the flat globules and droplets is known as the emulsification they enhance the absorption of fatty acids and cholesterol so your bile salts help to absorb the fat soluble vitamins like a d e and k so you can see your bile acid has a structure as like this a lipid onto which you have small structures like over here and the side which is plain is known as your hydrophobic side and the side which is having the green sort of elements is known as your hydrophilic side and your bile salts are recycled as they return into your liver so it is a sort of recycling process which continuously goes on next we are going to study about the absorption of nutrients in your absorption of nutrients the carbohydrates which is absorbed produces the energy when as your polysaccharides that are absorbed produces the starches your monosaccharides and disaccharides are your simple sugars whereas your cellulose will provide fiber or bulk the lipids are used for the energy when the glucose levels are low so when your glucose levels go down your body functions with the help of lipids your cholesterol is essential for cell growth and function so hence the absorbed cholesterol is used for the cell growth by the human body protein that is absorbed from your food is used for the growth and repair of tissue you have the essential amino acids which the body cannot make from your protein so the amino acid can be found over here in a protein structure which is 
a peptide bond you have the vitamins such as the fat which is soluble and water which is soluble the minerals are used to make enzymes cell membranes and proteins Next we are going to study about the aging and digestive system. As a person increased in ages, there is a decreased motility which is known as GERD which leads to GERD and there is a decreased absorption in the small intestine which leads to ulcers and cancers in a human body so these are the problems which are faced by a human on aging the digestive system has the ability to detoxify the blood and it has the sense of taste which is altered if there is a dietary change it might be due to isolation or depression so these are the effects if your digestive system doesn't function properly next we are going to see some of the common diseases and disorders which a person can be subjected to if he is not having a proper digestive functions the first disease we are going to study about is appendicitis appendicitis is the inflammation of appendix which can be found in your cecum in your large intestine and it can be life threatening if it is not treated properly The next disease is cirrhosis which is a chronic liver disease and in this case your normal tissue is replaced with a non functional scar tissue so in this case when a normal tissue is replaced with a non functional scar tissue it leads to a chronic liver disease such as cirrhosis And next we have colitis which is nothing but the inflammation of your large intestine and it can be either acute or chronic it depends on the inflammation and next if a person has a problem in the lining of the rectum or colon of the large intestine then it is known as colorectal cancer this situation is curable if it is treated early let us see some of disorders further constipation is nothing but the difficult in defecation process that is ejection of the unwanted compounds through the anus your crohn's disease is nothing but the inflammatory bowel disease and it typically affects the small intestine of a human diarrhea is the watery and the frequent feces which occurs during the defecation and it is usually self limiting that is it is cured on its own with the self limit next we have diverticulosis which is abdominal pouches in the intestinal wall 
So these abnormal pouches in your intestinal wall does not have any inflammation. It is known as diverticulosis. Let us see some more diseases and disorders based on small intestine and large intestine. The disease diverticulitis is nothing but the inflammation of the diverticuli. That is the abnormal pouches in your intestinal wall if the abnormal pouches are present in your intestinal wall it is known as diverticulosis. If there is an inflammation in the diverticulosis condition, then it is known as diverticulitis. And next we have the disease gastritis. Gastritis is the inflammation of the stomach lining, which is also known as upset stomach in a common language. And next disease is your heartburn. Your gastroesophageal reflex disease is the abbreviation of GERD. Your stomach acid is pushed into your esophagus in this condition. So this condition is known as gastroesophageal reflex disease and in common terms it is known as heartburn. The varicose vein that occurs in your rectum or anus is known as hemorrhoids which are blood filled sacs present in your rectum or anus in your veins. The inflammation of the liver is known as hepatitis. So this condition has various types. So these are some of the diseases a person can face due to improper digestive functions. We have some more diseases over here. Hyter hernia is a case in which a portion of your stomach protrudes into the chest through an opening which is usually your esophageal hiatus through your diaphragm. So in this case a stomach portion protrudes through the chest through the opening in the diaphragm and it is known as hiatal hernia. If a portion of your large intestine protrudes into the inguinal canal where your thigh and your trunk meet in case of males, it protrudes into the scrotum. So this case is known as inguinal hernia. So in inguinal hernia, your large intestine protrudes into the inguinal canal or the scrotum. Your oral cancer usually involves the lips and the tongue but generally it can occur anywhere in the mouth. It tends to spread rapidly. So your oral cancer occurs in mouth and mostly on lips and tongue. Next disease is pancreatic cancer. 
It is the fourth leading cause of cancer deaths in US. So the cancer that occurs in your pancreas is known as your pancreatic cancer. Whereas if the cancer cells are found in your stomach, that is particularly in your cardiac portion of the stomach, it is known as your stomach cancer. And it occurs more frequently in Japan, Chile and Iceland. If there is a breakdown in the lining of the stomach that can be caused by the bacteria H. pylori or in certain cases smoking, alcohol and excessive aspirin use and hypersecretion of stomach acid will lead to the breakdown of the lining of the stomach. And this condition of breakdown of lining of the stomach is known as your stomach ulcer. So these are some of the diseases one has to face in case of a digestive disorder. Thank you so much for joining GTEC. Hope you would have studied a lot about the large intestine and the organs surrounding it in this video. Thank you.